Feathers can be tricky because there are so many variations in shape, size and colour. But in this tutorial I'm going to share some techniques that you can use on every type of feather on any bird. So once I have my outline down, it's a good idea to come through with a dark charcoal pencil to block in the darkest areas first. And this will make sure that you don't lose your outline too quickly when we go into the next step. So I'm working on a smooth watercolour paper for this because I find that the charcoal looks a little less grainy on a smoother paper, but the watercolour paper allows for a few more layers of charcoal in comparison to other smoother papers. The charcoal pencils I'm using are by Generals, but you can use whatever brand you like. Once I've added in all of my darker areas, I'm using a blending stump to soften those areas and push the charcoal into the grooves of the paper. This will make it look a little bit less grainy and it stops some of that excess dust. The next thing that I'm going to do is create my own charcoal powder. So you can do this by rubbing a charcoal pencil on some printer paper to the side. If you have charcoal powder, you can obviously use that, but this technique also works quite well. And then I'm using a soft makeup brush to apply the charcoal to my drawing. And I'm basically applying this over the entire owl. So when you're drawing feathers, try to think about them as abstract shapes with shadows and highlights. If you try and think about them as individual feathers, I find that it's actually harder to make them look like feathers. If you look at your reference, pick out those dark areas first, following the abstract shapes that you see, and then adjust your midtones and highlights in the next few steps. Your drawing will come together in the end to give the illusion of feathers without actually drawing in every feather individually. So I'm now coming through with an eraser to lift up some of the charcoal, which will reveal the highlights. And this technique is actually much quicker and easier than trying to draw in your midtones and shadows around the highlight areas. This way you can literally draw your highlights with an eraser. So the eraser that I'm using is the Tombow Mono, but if you don't have one of these, you can just cut a sliver off of your normal eraser and then use the edge of that to create smaller marks. And this layer is still going to look a little bit flat. The shadows aren't quite dark enough and there aren't really any details yet. So I'm going to start with a dark charcoal pencil to come back and define those darker areas. And I'm really paying attention to my reference photo here and not just guessing where those dark areas are. Also, this may sound really obvious, but if you're working in a black and white medium like graphite or charcoal, make sure that you turn your reference photo into black and white as well. And that way it's easier to see your values or your shadows and highlights instead of trying to work out how dark a certain color is. Instead of applying charcoal powder this time, I'm actually just using the makeup brush to blend the areas around the dark pencil that I just added. So the darker charcoal pencils tend to be quite a lot softer and they leave quite a bit of dust on those areas. So you can actually use that excess dust and spread that into the mid-tone and highlight areas to create a lighter sort of shading there. Then I'm coming back through with the eraser again to lift out those highlights. And building up your layers like this will help give it more depth and it will look like there are multiple layers of feathers rather than trying to get it all done in one layer. So the reason why I like to use charcoal powder in the mid-tone and highlight areas rather than using a light charcoal pencil is because the powder can produce a lighter shade than the pencil can and it's easier to get a smoother result. And sometimes the pencil can leave a bit more graininess where the pencil strokes are so by using the brush, you can actually avoid that. And also when you go and erase the charcoal to reveal those highlights, it's much easier to erase the powder in comparison to trying to erase your pencil marks. When you're adding in your details towards the end, it can sometimes help if you compare your drawing and your reference photo side by side. You can do this by taking a picture of your artwork and then comparing it on the computer next to your reference or you can print out your reference photo and hold it next to your artwork. But this will allow you to compare your values or your shadows and highlights to see if they are actually accurate. Because a lot of people seem to have their highlights accurate but don't have their shadows as dark as they need to be. And that's usually because they're not aware that their shadows are not dark enough or they're just too scared to go that dark. So this will be able to help you see if your shadows are as dark as they need to be. And it also helps you be able to see if your details and proportions are accurate as well. 
Having them side by side makes it easier to look back and forth between the two and it makes it easier to see any areas that you might want to change. If you want some useful tips on how to draw fur with charcoal, there is a step-by-step -step tutorial of a bulldog in the top left corner that will help you out. So click on that and I'll see you over there.